So, welcome once again to our discussion on incentive designing, right? In our last class, we discussed about credible pollution permit as another instrument, market based instrument for pollution control. Now, uh, if we if we think about these two mechanisms, uh, so what we are discussing? Incentive design, right? So, we have discussed two market based instruments. These are called market based instruments or in short MBIs. So, we have uh, price rationing, first we discussed about price rationing, which is emission tax, and then we have also discussed about quantity rationing. which is credible pollution permit, credible pollution permit. Now, success of these two instruments, these two market based instruments depends on how well the policy maker or the regulator is aware of the marginal cost of pollution control, right. So, that means, the success of these two instruments, success depends on, depends on information, information about, about marginal abatement cost or MACs of the forms. Now, there is some kind of information asymmetry arises in the context of marginal abatement cost. Why information asymmetry? Because the firms know their marginal abatement cost better than the regulator. We have some kind of uncertainty regulator is suffering from some kind of inform some kind of uncertainty about the marginal abatement cost of the firms and in presence of information asymmetry so there is information asymmetry information asymmetry So, this is asymmetric information. Asymmetric information about marginal abatement costs because the firms know their MAC is better than the regulator. And what happens in presence of information asymmetry, the high cost form, they will anyway report themselves as high cost. So, high cost form, high cost form reports report themselves. as high cost and low cost firm also report themselves as high cost. Why this is so? Because if the cost of abatement is higher, then a regulator will ask them to abate less amount, is not it? Is that clear? So, the moment I say that I have my cost of abatement is very high, regulator will ask them to abate less, right. 
as a result of which low cost firm also reports themselves as high cost. So, low cost firm, low cost firms also reports themselves as high cost, right. Okay. Now, in this situation, in this situation, what the regulator or policy makers challenge is to do is to design a policy so that, so that the firms they reveal their true marginal cost of abatement, which is called incentive compatibility incentive compatibility this is a very very important concept i am talking about incentive compatibility incentive compatibility so the regulator should give some incentives so policies should provide should provide enough incentive for revealing true marginal cost of abatement okay true marginal cost of abatement so it is like you might be aware of uh, insurance policies in insurance market generally what happens everyone claims to be low risk because if you claim as a high risk person your premium would be higher right so everyone every individual while buying the insurance they will claim themselves as low risk individual whether it is health insurance or uh, uh, automobile insurance so on and so forth so in that case the insurance company's challenge is to design a policy so that high risk individual will reveal themselves as high low risk individual will reveal themselves as low and you have seen the different types of incentives that the insurance companies they give to provide your true uh, uh, risk in terms of driving as well as uh, health or they do if you claim yourself as a low risk individual then they will say that okay i will give you a, a coverage higher coverage your premium would be low but when you claim when you claim for benefit then there would be some kind of deduction on the other hand, if your premium is higher, if you pay a higher premium, then there is no deduction. For example, if you claim 10,000, then they will say that insurance companies will say that since your insurance premium is quite low, then they will say that out of that 10,000, 3,000 or 4,000 rupees, you have to pay uh, e from your own packet. This is sometimes it is called co-payment also right so now in presence of co-payment or standard deduction then i have less incentive to claim myself as low risk individual because my premium is low but at the same time at the time of claiming there would be some kind of standard deduction okay so that is all that is also called incentive compatibility now in the in this context also while designing emission tax or any other market based instruments policy makers challenge is to design the policy so that these firms they reveal their true marginal cost of abatement okay and what could be such policies it may so happen that the policy makers design a policy wherein if you claim yourself as a low cost uh, low cost uh, firm if you say that my cost of abatement is low then low cost firm let us say that this is an example low cost firm abates more 
but get some subsidy. High cost firm high cost firm abet less, but does not enjoy any subsidy. Okay. This may be one example, I am just taking an example, there may be other incentives which is uh, uh, to satisfy incentive compatibility. So, that means, well, you are high cost firm that is fine, you abate less, but I am not giving you any additional benefit. On the other hand, if you claim yourself as low cost firm, you abate more, but I will give you some subsidy which might help you to come up with better technologies. Okay, or which will help you to come up with clean technologies which will reduce your emission and you have to pay less amount of tax next round. Right? So, this is the challenge, this is the challenge because in reality there is information asymmetry between the regulator and the firms. Firms they know better about their marginal cost of abatement than the regulator. Regulator is only expecting, regulator is only guessing. That is why in presence of uncertainty, we discussed about uh, the policy uh, initiatives uh, taking uh, expected marginal cost of abatement. Right? And this is what the policy maker should think that in which way I should design my policy, so that become, so that policies become incentive compatible, high cost firm will reveal themselves as high cost, low cost firm will reveal themselves as low cost firm. That is called incentive compatibility, a very, very important concept and a challenge for the policy makers to make the policies incentive compatible. Now, once we talk about, once we talk about uh, price rationing and quantity rationing, then next thing what we need to do, we need to compare, we need to compare these two policies, we need to compare these two policies in, uh, on, on effectiveness, efficiency and equity ground. We have two alternative policies available. Now, which policies to adopt in which particular context that depends on their relative effectiveness, efficiency and equity perspective. That is why now we are going to talk about effectiveness, efficiency and equity qualifications of these two market based instruments namely emission tax and tradable pollution permit. So, we are going to talk about effectiveness, so let us say that this is effectiveness. First of all, what is effectiveness? When a particular policy is able to achieve its objective, when a policy, when a policy or instrument, I will say, inst instrument, instrument, instrument is achieving its objective its objective we say that particular policy or instrument 
is effective right so that means without knowing the policy makers objective or the regulators objective i cannot say that this policy is effective or this instrument is effective for example suppose i am following a particular mode of teaching now if i if i ask you whether my particular way of teaching is effective or not you may not be able to answer that question unless and until i tell what is my objective of this course what is the specific objective that i am going to attain out of teaching this particular course environmental and resource economics if i specify my objective is to impart maximum amount of knowledge to the student then at the end of the course you can easily evaluate which, uh, whether my way of teaching was effective or not in achieving that particular objective okay similarly if i specify that my objective of teaching this course is not to impart maximum amount of knowledge rather i should teach in a way so that students get maximum marks in exam now you can very well understand gaining maximum amount of knowledge is not same as getting maximum marks in an exam right so effectiveness of my way of teaching may also vary depending on my objective it may be very very effective in imparting maximum amount of knowledge to the student but may not be effective if my objective is to help the student getting maximum marks for example if my objective is to help the students to get maximum marks in the exam probably i should discuss more sample questions how to write and how to write the sample um, uh, answers for those questions how to be precise how to complete all the answers in 3 hours of time so and and so forth right so i should be very very particular towards the exam focusing more and more on the exam and the evaluation components on the other hand if my objective is to impart maximum knowledge then instead of focusing too much on the exam i should actually discuss the theory in detail i should give proper examples of that probably i should discuss all related concepts as well which may or may not come directly in the exam so that is why whether my way of teaching is effective or not it all depends on what is my teaching objective right same thing is applicable here when the regulator is designing a policy either emission tax or tradable permit when i am judging about their effectiveness i must also ensure what is the regulator's objective so depending on that i we will evaluate the effectiveness right and we will see there might be alternative objectives of the regulators depending on that emission tax or tradable pollution permit will become effective then efficiency when can i say that a particular policy or instrument is efficient do you know the definition of efficiency even though we use the word quite frequently giving a proper definition of efficiency is rather difficult but it is simple so we will say that when a policy or instrument achieves its objective at minimum cost at minimum cost then only 
then only it becomes it becomes efficient. Okay. There are there are suppose there are different modes of teaching. Some professor are teaching, some professors are teaching by chalk and talk method, they will come to the class and then they will simply use chalk and talk method. Some professors will use PowerPoint method, some professors will will make will record and make a video of their lecture and then distribute. And let us say that all these policies are effective, that means all these policies are successful enough to impart maximum knowledge. Then we have to evaluate which cost of each and every mode of teaching. And if we find that chalk and talk method involves minimum cost, then we will say that this method of teaching is most efficient. Similarly, when there are different modes of controlling pollution, let us say that one is pollution, tradable pollution permit and another one is emission tax, then we have to see what is the cost involved in each of these two modes of controlling, two methods of controlling pollution. If we find that emission tax achieves, achieves its objective at minimum cost, then we will say that emission tax is more efficient compared to tradable pollution permit. So, efficiency requires calculation of cost also, right? And third one is called equity. What is equity? Equity is a concept, it is rather involved than these two. Whenever a policy is implemented or any instrument is chosen for controlling pollution, that that uh, that generates some kind of some kind of distribution of cost and benefit. What I am saying? When a policy is taken for pollution control, then that policy will generate some kind of distribution of the benefit and cost. For example, if you go back and recall the Cozian bargaining framework, when the property right was given to the polluter and polluter was asked to bargain or to bribe the polluter for controlling for reducing pollution, we saw that even though both of them were benefited, the benefit was more skewedly distributed in favor of the polluter than the polluter. On the other hand, when the property right is assigned to the polluter, then both of them are benefited, but distribution is more key skewed towards the polluter. So, that means any type of instrument, that means this emission tax or tradable pollution permit, tradable uh, emission tax is basically based on the polluters pay principle that means property right is assigned to the polluty. Okay. So, it may so happen that benefit is mostly distributed in favor of the polluty. So, the policy makers challenge is to assign the policy so that the distribution of the benefit is more equitable. So, the policy policy or instrument should be should be chosen or selected in such a way that equitable distribution equitable distribution of cost 
and benefit of pollution control. Of pollution control is ensued. Okay. So, policy makers must think about this equity perspective. Now, let us take an example. Sometimes we see that some industries are highly inefficient as far as pollution control is concerned. For example, let us say that let us take the example of leather industry, highly inefficient in controlling pollution. Leather industry is one of the most polluting industries among the manufacturing sector. So, if you think about their uh, efficiency in controlling pollution, they are highly inefficient. But at the same time, at the same time, these industries are one of those industry, leather industry is one of those industries which generates maximum amount of employment and that too for low skill labor. So, while targeting these inefficient pollution making industries by heavy tax, we must also think about the benefit that it generates for the society in terms of employment. So, the moment we impose heavy penalty, heavy regulation for this particular industry, we will lose a huge amount of employment from the low cost uh, laborers. So, that means, we must think is this a equitable distribution? Who is going to be benefited when the industry is subject to regulation? Who is going to be the sufferer of this regulation? So, the question is then should we allow these inefficient industries to operate so that we can gain, uh, so that we can gain uh, more equitable distribution. So, that means, efficiency and equity may not be achieved simultaneously. Why this is so? Because if you want to achieve efficiency, you must target these industries, you must subject them for regulation. But if you subject them for strict regulation, we will lose so much of employment and that means, the low skill laborer will be suffering from their loss of jobs. So, these type of things, all this, uh, all these two uh, uh, things we must think about these three important criteria effectiveness, efficiency and equity before we design a particular policy. Let us now talk about these two instruments emission tax and tradable pollution permit on the grounds of effectiveness, efficiency and equity.